Welcome back to our final Back to the Future slot car build video. Now take it away, Trevor. So in our last video, I had glued on the back white pieces here. And in between that time, I take my sandpaper block and sanded this down so it's smooth in this direction, as well as around those corners. So that gives us a good place to start to put our plastic down. What I'm going to do is, I've got some cardboard here, and I'm going to put the body back on, like so. And then take the cardboard and try to sort out how this shape in here will be to fill the gaps in between the bottom of the pan to the bottom of our car body, as well as figure out how to get a piece of plastic around the back. So here I've taken the cardboard and I've cut it into shape, one for the front and one for the back. These will be transferred onto pieces of styrene plastic. Now as you can see, the front one will wrap around and go underneath. There's going to be a little bit of a sort of a gap in between here and the front. So I'll make another piece that fits over the top this way and meets up with the front just to cover it all over. The back might be a bit of an issue, I'm not too sure yet, because with the shape of this thing... Okay. Um, I had a little problem with... Uh, whoops. I'm trying to figure out the angles in here, and I hope that the styrene will bend around that curve like the cardboard does, or I could be in a bit of trouble. And then uh, when I flip it over, we've got some overhang going on, and that can easily be fixed with the sandpaper block on the MDF by just sanding over the top of it and eliminating it. Here we have our black body panels, cut out of sheet styrene, of course. And I notice there's a little bit of a textured side on one side and a smooth side on the other. So what I'll do here, I've got the little notches just to go in there. I will glue these onto the body. And I think I will need to glue a little section with crazy glue and then uh, let that dry and then glue another section, hold it on, let it dry, glue another section, let it dry until this is all the way around. Because if I try to do it in one step, it's going to spring like a spring, of course, and come out of the way. Here we have our DeLorean after I made up all the little black filler panels. And as you can see, this is now starting to look pretty good hiding all the uh, things that we had to put in there just in order to raise the bottom pan up to the body height. It's not bad, really. There is still that overhang in the front, but I did put a little cover on there, so it's not too bad. But what I think I will do along this edge here is just take my Zuron snippers and cut it because that overhang is quite large underneath, and I think it would look better tapered to that edge of the filler panel that we put inside. Here we have the front panel of our DeLorean sanded down to match. And as you can see, this does look better now. It doesn't have all that funny overhang from the Porsche. Almost looks like it was designed for the DeLorean. The only thing I don't like is that it does stick out still in a curve, whereas the front of the car is flat. So you can see a lot of scratches on the front here. I'm just going to use some Abaddon Black to cover all those over, as well as any other spots where we can see white plastic poking through, or any scratches. Now we have the undercarriage of our body completely painted, and as you can see it did turn out really nice. It does look a little big and bulky, but again, we had that deep Porsche body, but on the front it doesn't look bad. So there we go. Now the next step, of course, will be to paint our body. So here we have a guide for our painted body, which of course is the die-cast car that I did in a previous video. So here we're going to do the same sort of paint job onto this body for our slot car. One thing I discovered about our Back to the Future DeLorean body is that it is chrome-plated and it's actually clear-coated with something to give it that uh, stainless steel look. And I've noticed it in areas on here, I don't think the camera can pick this up too well, but it's actually crazing, whatever they clear-coated this with. So I have to be pretty careful. And the way I found this out is I found my old black metal foil and I put this stripe on here. And when I peeled off the black metal foil, there's all kinds of little chips along here. So I touched them over with some dull aluminum. 
which is kind of a match to this color, but not really. So that means that I'm going to have to freehand all of this. So I was hoping to use masking tape, but if I peel it off and the clear coat comes off with the masking tape, this is going to look horrible. And I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to have to actually brush paint this DeLorean and be very, very careful as I go along. One of the other things, of course, is our clear windshield and side glass. The problem with this is if I click it in, we can't actually have the interior drop right down to the bottom because it hits all the Carrera chips on that chassis. So I'm going to have to cut the interior out and uh, basically paint the inside of the glass gloss black or flat black because otherwise you're going to see all the wires and the chip and everything else. So we really want to hide that in this model. Here I have the windshield covered over with some green masking tape. And what I want to do is paint the inside without getting any paint on the outside. So that's why we have the mask on here. Here we have our windshield after I sprayed some satin black on the inside. It doesn't look too good from here, but as soon as we turn it over you can see just how nice that black tinting worked. Here we have our die-cast car from before. And this is how our slot car up top is coming along. You can see that I painted in here under on the grill underneath the hood where the windshield wipers are. And then up along the sides, that's all freehand. Very uh, tricky to do. I'm using a Citadel Games Workshop uh, Abate in Black and it can be hard to lay it down nice and smooth. So I've had to thin it a little bit and then go in in subsequent coats and thicken it up. You can see the back of the mirrors, how I got that on there, and then in the back. Now, right along here, this is going to be painted a light gray color, like on here, to represent that rubber rear bumper that they had, and in the front. And then I'll paint in the flat black on the DMC in the front here on the grill. Now, before we get too carried away on the car, here we have that back panel, and I have sawn off the interior that was down in this area. And here you can see that it is shortened up. There's the rear firewall and uh, the flux capacitor on the inside, which sadly we won't be able to see any of this once we have our slot car together. So here's the back end of the slot car. And this piece is easy to fit in. It will just, let's see, go under and there's a little lock-in tab right there. And then this is what we'll get in our end result. Now this is just a dry fit of the parts. I still have some more to go on here, but I wanted to show you what this back panel would look like. And again, as you can see, it covers up a multitude of sins, like the rear engine. But then again, in the front, you can easily see all the plugs and wires. This is why we're painting that windshield with the black on the inside, so that it'll cover all of this. Because we can't have an interior, because the bottom of the interior hits all of this stuff, and that's just not what we want. And here you can see how nicely the flat black along the bottom blends into the black along our chassis frame. And again, this is quite nice. I think this will really make the car look sleek once it's on the track. Next up on our Back to the Future painting adventure, we are going to be painting our tail lamps using Tester's Stoplight Red and Tester's Turn Signal Amber. These are enamel-based paints, which we will need to use our paint thinner on to clean up our brushes after we're finished. As a guide for painting our turn signals and stoplights, we will just be using the die-cast model that I built in a previous video. I'm also going to add in some Abaddon black onto those grills on our plastic parts, just so that it all ends up looking correct. Here's our taillights in sort of a mid-step of painting, with of course our tester stoplight red and tester's turn signal amber painted in place. All I need to do now is just go in on that grid with the black paint. Now while our taillights are drying, I have painted a little bit of the DeLorean, and I'm sort of in a mid-step here. Now here you can see that yellow wiring, which was the base coat for our color. And what I'm going to do now is apply some Tester's uh, Model Master Red, Chrysler Engine Red, and a blue on there, so that we can get the colored wires here, much like our DeLorean die-cast. So sort of that uh, weaved, blended together wire effect. And I'll just take my paintbrush and paint little angle stripes on here of the yellow and, or pardon me, the red and the blue, just to make this look exactly like what I did on that die-cast kit. 
And here we have our DeLorean now with the wires painted on. As you can see, they are red, yellow, and blue all coiled up. I don't know if I really did a good job on this or not. Kind of let you guys decide here. But uh, that's basically much like the um, die cast that we did earlier. And then here's that back panel. This, of course, is going to fit right in here. If it will let me. <laughs> and then slot into the back. I will use some crazy glue, I think, just to hold all that in place. But there, as you can see, now the wire looks pretty nice up against the black backdrop there of the back panel. So, pretty soon, this thing should be finished. One other thing I added in was the little DMC letters right in the grill. And that, again, will make our car look very much like the one from the movie. So this is just a little bit of a sneak peek, because there's still a lot of details and whatnot that need to be attached to the body and so forth. But, as you can see, this is how our body is fitting together onto that slot car chassis from the Porsche. Highly modified, as you can tell. But again, looking quite good. There's, of course, our colored wires, our tinted glass, spray-painted from the inside, because I can't put the interior in, because that just hits the, uh, the little chip down there. There's our back looking all nice and crisp. Good look at the front. I still need to put in the headlights. I need to put in the little pieces that attach the bumper to the wires, as well as the back, and all the little uh, bits and pieces from our flux capacitor and whatnot, our time travel stuff. Those big vents pop in here, for example, and our license plate. But overall, it's looking pretty good. I do like the bigger tires on here. Kind of cool. The only uh, thing I don't quite like is the front and that it couldn't actually sit down nice and level like the real DeLorean. But again, as you saw at the beginning, we have that really deep bodied Porsche and there's not too much you can do about that to uh, actually make this thing level. So here we have the head and taillights for our DeLorean after I added in all the black stripes and everything. On the headlights here, I put a little black line just in between the two of them, so that they look like separate units instead of just one big chrome piece. Now, as careful as I was on these little grid sections, I did get a little heavy-handed here and hit some of the color. I don't really know, uh, at 45 years old, how to, <laughs> how to be as steady a hand as I was at, say, like 30 or 20. But anyway, there's our tail lamps, and I added in a lot of black paint around the edges. Just so when they click in place, you don't see any chrome showing through. As for our body of the DeLorean, I decided to paint all inside there black at the back. And I also noticed that there are a little bit of spots on here where uh, paint is rubbing off. And you can see the black plastic underneath. So I will have to touch those up. But as you can see, I put in all the railing on the body. Now let's just wind this back. There we go. I put in all the uh, rails along the body and everything, but then when I went to put in the undercarriage, it hits on the wraparound components there. So I'm going to have to cut these back a little bit, just so that everything fits. But overall, I think we're getting to a stage where we're almost done this thing. Here's our DeLorean with the taillights clicked into place, and what I did is I put them in at the top and then swung them in from the bottom and clicked and pressed until everything lined up perfectly. So, how does that look? So I've done quite a few things on this model so far, and I just thought I'd press it together at this stage just to see how it's all going to turn out. And I think this is starting to look really good. We're almost finished. There's all the back pieces put in. I still have to put in the uh, little chiller units and whatnot, but I crazy glued in this pan in here, so now it's in to stay. There's our back end, and uh, if I just turn this upside down, maybe back somehow. Okay, so what I did is I just took my number 16 hobby blade there and pushed down a little bit into just a little tiny bit of these ends, and I was able to get it to perfectly fit into this back box piece that I made. So the uh, little chiller things actually look like it goes inside, much like on the real Back to the Future DeLorean. The only downside is I can't put any tailpipes in under here, which would be kind of cool, but I don't have anything really to do that with. Uh, I snapped in the front headlights up there, so you can see again how nice this looks. 
and then uh, there's all our painted wiring. Now I haven't done any of the touch-up on the silver piece because I think I will do that at the very end. There's still a lot of handling I have to do back in here, so if I paint it I'm only going to end up with silver all in my hands and getting it everywhere. So there's no sense in that, but look at how nicely all the wheels and everything fit together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get some two-way carpet tape, double-sided, and I'm going to put it along the bottom here and in here, and the stickiness of that tape is what's going to hold the car together. And uh, that's because there's no place to put any screws into anything in here. So that'll be quite the neat thing once it's done. Next up, we'll put in all the back pieces. One thing I thought I would do is, in the Back to the Future kit, I got a set of decals, water slide, and a pair of stickers for the license plates. And before I put all the coolers and whatnot on the back, I'm just going to take my time to put out of time on the back here in the license plate shroud. And here we have our DeLorean from the side profile all finished. I added in the little hook here, but this is just sitting loose so it can easily be popped off for when I need to ship it back to Italy. And this little bar here with the uh, blue ends, that one can also be pulled straight up in case uh, there's trouble trying to get this in. But as you can see, there she is. Here's our famous front three-quarter shot. And again, you can see that the profile ended up quite nice considering this started off as a Carrera GT3 Porsche. So here we have a nice three-quarter rear view shot of our DeLorean. And as you can see, those taillights look really nice, like they're actually turned on. And uh, there's all our nice detail up the back and everything. So again, I hope my friend in Italy likes this. Well, I hope you enjoyed our Back to the Future slot car build. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you in the future.